So we want to make sure that you leave here today knowing who you're, you're emailing and who you're communicating with, knowing who our, our chief reporters are in the area, the people that get our news out, and how to get to them. So let me just tell you a little about them. David Sweet. Dave has been the um, editor of the Lake Forester while well, you've been with Sun-Times Media since 2003 and have served as managing editor of the Lake Forester. Previously, he worked as a columnist and reporter for the Wall Street Journal Online in New York and as executive sports editor for three times mirror newspapers in Los Angeles. He contributes to NBCSports.com and wrote a book in 2010 about Lamar Hunt, founder of the American Football League. I didn't know that, Dave. <laughs> Major <laughs> soccer I'll get you a copy. And other sports <laughs> ventures. He lives in Lake Forest with his wife, Tricia, who is sitting to his left, and children, Hannah, David, and Ford. Jim Powers, right here. Jim has been serving as the editor of Lake Forest Lake Bluff Patch since before its launch in October of 2010. He has spent more than 20 years in newspapers, both in Illinois and Arizona, and worked in marketing communications, public relations, and school communications. He grew up in Wilmette and has been back in Illinois since 2007 after spending 18 years in Phoenix. Good choice. <laughs> Adrian Fawcett. Adrian. Adrian is a resident of Lake Bluff who in 2008 decided she wanted to go back to her uh, roots in journalism, to her experience in journalism, and at the time decided to use her skills in reporting and editing to create a local news website for Lake Forest and Lake Bluff that would combine professional reporting with events, announcements, photos, and other information submitted by readers. Gazebo News is widely read and it has been at the crest of worldwide hyper-local news movement. It's also attracted attention nationally from the Knight Foundation for New Media, McCormick Foundation, Pointer Institute, Northwestern University, DePaul, and Indiana Universities, and Gazebo News is a founding member of the Local Independent Online News Trade Association, an international trade group representing the thousands of people who, like Adrian, have created community news sites to represent their towns. It is my very great pleasure to introduce our staff for today, and we'll start with Dave Sweet. Dave. Thank you, Joanna. Well, thank you for inviting me, Joanna, and I want to thank our, uh, my esteemed competitors, Jim and Adrian, also for uh, being here. I guess we're not exactly sharing a podium, but we're sharing a, a space up here to talk about local media. Uh, for those who don't know, Jim and I uh, had an office right next to each other at Pioneer Press for many years, so we've known each other for quite a while. Adrian and I just met a few years ago when we got together for coffee at Starbucks, and the funny thing is at that point we said, wouldn't it be a great idea to have a panel of, uh, of the three of us and maybe some others, if others were available, to talk about local media? And uh, thanks to Joanna, we're here today and it's all set up. Uh, aside from my wife, Tricia, who was uh, introduced, she writes a, a column for the uh, trend section of Pioneer Press every week. Uh, so if you have any benefits you'd like to have covered, uh, Trish is the person to contact. Uh, I'd also like to introduce uh, Megan Spellman, who's our uh, advertising representative for Pioneer Press. We always welcome advertising, so uh, <laughs> feel free to speak with Megan at any point uh, after the event. Well, the last time I was in this room was all of eight days ago when the uh, Lake Forester held an event where we launched a publication called Preview. Uh, some of you may have seen it. It goes out to non-subscribers in your mailbox every Wednesday, sort of uh, gives you the highlights of that week's Lake Forester uh, in a 16-page format. Uh, we run a couple of stories in full. The rest of it is sort of teasing to what's in that Thursday's paper in hopes that you'll subscribe to it. And I was thinking at that point, you know, this is pretty amazing. Uh, there have been so many changes in local media um, that it's almost stunning to think about. And, and as I looked back a little bit, the last time I spoke at a chamber luncheon was March of 2005. And uh, way back when, uh, that was at the Harrison House, which uh, really doesn't exist for luncheons at least anymore. So that's a major change. But in local media since March of 2005, consider what's happened. Uh, Patch.com started. Uh, Gazebo News started. Trib Local started. And as I say, just last week, Preview and Lake Forest started. 
And when you think about it, it's really sort of a golden age for residents. Uh, there's so much, so many opportunities to get local information from different sources here that it's just, uh, it, it's great for all of you. Uh, if, if we don't cover something, likely Jim or Adrian is, or if they're not, likely we are, and you have many, many more choices than you used to. Uh, so that's a good thing for everyone here. And for all of us at uh, Sun-Times Media, most of you know Sun-Times Media owns the Lake Forester and Pioneer Press, as well as the Chicago Sun-Times and other publications. The past seven years, uh, since I last spoke at a chamber event, have been very challenging. Uh, we went through a bankruptcy that most of you have read about, uh, cut some newspapers and some staff, but at this point, everything is in very good shape after a lot of uh, turmoil. As I mentioned, we had the uh, preview section that debuted last week, and that's really something that uh, we're really excited about. Uh, we have one as well in Highland Park and Northbrook. They're eventually gonna be rolled out in all 32 uh, pioneer towns. Again, sort of a, a quick look at what's happening in the next day's Lake Forester with the idea that this looks really interesting. I should get the full story by buying the paper. Uh, the Lake Forester itself has unveiled a number of uh, new initiatives lately. Uh, in the past few months, we have a, uh, a Pioneer Press poll that runs with a story every week. We have a question of the week that asks uh, people a question such as, what are you going to do for Father's Day with a, a number of photos with that. We have a business spotlight that runs weekly that focuses on local businesses. So uh, we're, we're doing you know, a, lot, a lot of new things as well uh, that you know, should be of interest to readers. And talking about the Lake Forester and, and the preview edition also brings up the point, a lot of people have talked about the death of print uh, and how online is, it is you know, moving forward and all that, but print is still very viable. Uh, we obviously still have a number, thousands of subscribers, a lot of advertisers, and uh, as we move forward, people enjoy the fact that they can carry the Lake Forester to places, they can take their time to, to look through the paper, uh, which is just something, it's a different experience than uh, looking at things online. Uh, but in terms of the web, we also have a, a vibrant website. I would say, again, looking back seven years when I spoke in 2005, that was not the case then. Uh, at that point, our website was everything that um, appeared in the paper on Thursday was dumped on the web Thursday morning. And as everyone knows, that's not the way to run a website. Uh, you've got to update it frequently. You've got to have new content as much as possible. And that's what we've been doing lately. Uh, we revamped the website last year along with other Pioneer Press websites. And uh, once we have a story set and ready, say it's uh, well, well, yeah, today's Wednesday, the paper's already been printed, so if we had a story ready today, we aren't just going to wait and run it next Thursday in the paper, eight days away, we're going to run it today on the website. Uh, so that's been a, a big change for us. Uh, we also have a, a Facebook page for the Lake Forester. I encourage anyone to sign up for that if you're interested, and uh, we also uh, have uh, Twitter accounts. We tweet uh, you know, breaking news and that sort of thing. So a lot of changes there. Uh, also, as part of Sun-Times Media, we've set up a uh, shared content system. And for instance, if a story runs in the Chicago Sun-Times, and uh, this week there's a story about the uh, former owner of the Lake Forest Travel Bureau who passed away. Uh, many of you may have known her. Uh, that was in the Sun-Times. That's something we can pick up. We put it on our website and it'll be in the Lake Forester tomorrow. Uh, as well, the Lake County New Sun is part of our, um, our uh, company and they have a lot of stories about Lake Forest, Lake Bluff as well that we can run in uh, the Lake Forester. So it's sort of nice to have all these resources that we can uh, use to make the paper better. Uh, also, we have new owners as of uh, January some of you may know Tim Knight. He's the uh, CEO of Sun-Times Media. He's a Lake Forest resident, and uh, he's sort of in charge of the company at the moment with a number of new investors. Uh, a lot of you also knew Rick Serkimer. He was the president and COO of Sun-Times Media, uh, who he's not with the company anymore, but he's a Lake Forest resident. 
and was uh, heavily involved with the Lake Forester. Uh, I think it's very important for editors and uh, executives, if possible, to live in the community. Um, as uh, I know Jim does and Adrian does and I, I do as well. Because uh, that's the way, you know, we really hear about story ideas. That's the way an editor uh, can feel, you know, a, a lot of passion for the product they're putting out. Um, I know we all three care about uh, what we, we're doing every day quite a bit. So I think it's important for editors to be in the community that they serve. Um, if I can step back even further than the seven years that I mentioned before I last spoke at a chamber luncheon, uh, I was hired in 2003, as Joanna mentioned, uh, at the Lake Forester. And uh, at that point, the Lake Forester had, I was the fourth editor in a year. So the Lake Forester was going through a lot of turmoil. Um, and at that point, I said, we, there's got to be a better way of of you know, getting things in the paper and, and just making the paper more vibrant. So what I focused on was uh, Q&As of local residents with local residents, uh, profiles of people who have uh, gone on from Lake Forest and Lake Bluff and done great things. Um, a recent example of that is Michael Caruso, Lake Forest High School graduate who's editor of Smithsonian Magazine. Focused on local news as just the crux of everything. I remember before I started, I um, saw on the Lake Forest, it said, new police chief hired. And I said, oh, this is interesting. It was the police chief of Highland Park. And I just don't think many people in the towns here care about information like that. Anyways, this, should I sum it up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm getting the, the cut sign. Anyway, well, thank you for inviting me. I'll be here uh, afterwards for any questions you may have. And uh, thanks again.